I'm not sure if you've heard, but the sequel to the arguably best vampire game ever made was announced a little while ago. And in anticipation of the 2020 release of Bloodlines 2, the good folks over at itch.io decided to have themselves a little vampire-centric game jam. As you can see from the title of this video, we're gonna have a look at one of them. So hop in my cab and let's take a drive down to Santa Monica by night. Created in seven days by a team of two, Outstar credited for the writing, art and design, and Memories in 8-bit credited for the implementation and coding. Santa Monica by Night is... weird, but in a good way. See, the game follows the events of the first Bloodlines game, but not like you think. See, in the world of Santa Monica by Night, Bloodlines was a game that came out, and as the game opens up, our protagonist tells us that this is Santa Monica, and this is a location that feels incredibly familiar to them. Although, they have never been there. Not in real life, at least. But not only is this a world where the game Bloodlines came out, but also a world where vampires are real. And our nearly embraced Thin Blood has been sent from Santa Monica, which looks awfully similar to the one from the game they played 15 years ago, by the Sire, to search for a vampire. Upon exiting an eerily familiar apartment building, we come across someone, someone that changes everything we know about this world up until this point. The man in front of us is Flynn, the pawn store owner from the first Bloodlines game. So, not only is this a world where Bloodlines as a game exists, but also a world where Bloodlines exists, period. This is the world of Bloodlines, but also a world where Bloodlines exists as a game. Now that we know that we're in Bloodlines, we might as well head to the Asylum to meet up with some familiar faces. But inside the Asylum, neither Therese nor Ginetta are to be found. Instead, we come across another vampire, Skelter. Skelter seems to know about our mission and our target, and he helps us by suggesting that we go find Bertram Tongue, the Nos from the first game. Heading into Bertram's old hideout to look for him, we're knocked out and blindfolded. And when we regain consciousness and our sight back, we find out that we've been kidnapped by members of the Second Inquisition. The Inquisition attempts to interrogate us, but since we don't know anything, they can't get anything out of us. So they try and kill us the best way they know how, by exposing us to sunlight. But luckily for us, we're such a thin, thin blood that sunlight is not lethal to us. As the agents of the Inquisition bicker over what this lack of dying from sunlight means, the room becomes dark and a struggle can be heard. As the lights turn back on, we're now alone, but a manhole cover has opened. Beyond the piercing darkness of the manhole cover, down in the sewer, we encounter a face that is to both us the players and the protagonist a familiar one. We encounter Bertram Tongue. Bertram informs us that this world is not completely like the Bloodlands world we know. Some facets of it deviate. Some vampires can walk in sunlight, some can't. Some can eat garlic, and some can't, and so on. Bertram lets us know that he'll be in touch if he gets a lead on the man we're looking for, and tells us to keep an eye on our email. After wandering around aimlessly for a while and returning to the apartment, we find that the email is here, and in it, the location of Vincent, the guy we were sent to find. At Vincent's location, we find him badly injured and dying. The Inquisition unfortunately got to him before we did. Before we can figure out what to do with him, he succumbs to his wounds and turns to dust. With no other options, we return once again to the apartment that feels oh so familiar. And here, another email awaits. An email telling us to come meet the vampire that created us, at the place where it all began. Julius, our creator, gives us a choice. To diabolize and consume him to become a fully fledged vampire, never to see another sunrise again. Or make no choice in the matter. Or Regain our humanity by slaying him, an act that will turn us fully human once again. And with this choice, Santa Monica by Night ends. This was a strange little journey. Very meta. It was odd stepping into the world of Bloodlines again, not as another character and yet another playthrough, but as someone who had experienced the events like we had, through the medium of a video game. Visiting this incredibly familiar place that neither of us had ever been to, at least not in real life, I don't know if the team behind it plans on continuing this project, if they do, I'm excited. And if they don't, then I'm excited to see what else they can come up with. Whatever that is. Anyways, you should go play the thing I just played. And let the creators know that you played it and enjoyed it. Because it's super cool. That's it for me. Bye-bye.